You can also now watch Packard Pokes at on Atheism TV at youtube.com slash Atheism TV and as always on youtube.com slash Packard Pokes at. Come to the live show and chat with us on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at. See you there. Do you really like Packard Pokes at and want to promote the show? Then go to cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at. There are hundreds of items available, including hats, shirts, hoodies, and so much more. Every purchase from cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at helps support the show. Your Packard Pokes at coffee mug is waiting for you. Do you want to stream Packard Pokes at on your iPhone or Blackberry? Download Stitcher free today at stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're on in three, two, one. This is Packard Pokes at, and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining us tonight from the far, far east coast is Joe Unseen. Littering and, littering and, littering and, smoking the reefer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that would explain all these er, these uh, jokes right towards the beginning, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, the only reefers I know are on semi trucks. You know, those those are called reefers. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what I've always associated that word with. And and to hear people call marijuana that, it's like no, 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 no. That that's what keeps meat and ice cream frozen. That's right. That's exactly. It's a, it's short for refrigerator. Uh, and join us from the far left coast is Connie Practical Magic. Hey there. <laughs> you 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 you. Anyway, you made me stumble. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna sing the Doom song now. Doom, 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 doom. doom. There. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry about that, Connie. I just I was just. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just having one of those it, nights. It really threw me. That. <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I gotta keep I, you on your toes, you know, around hey, here, I you know. Make it, yeah. <laughs> Wait, like, did you say you're gonna make it or naked? I, I, I I'm naked. It's oh, okay. Yeah, no, no hey, I'm not. But. Oh, no, that's fine. Under my clothes, I'm completely <laughs> naked. Also, it doesn't matter, you know. Uh. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh my. Anyway. <laughs> All right, well, we have a, a nice short show for you tonight, so uh, we're going to get going on our first stories uh, right now. Building a better future, science and technology. Science. Jurassic Squirrel. Yes, I said a Jurassic Squirrel. <laughs> 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 it ain't nuts, like nobody's business. No, actually, <laughs> it's a newly discovered fossil called Megaconus... Melif- Mammaliformis, a ju- or basically a Jurassic squirrel, that roamed the Earth 165 million years ago. Million. Uh, <laughs> it shows the traits and hairs of fur before the before uh, mammals. Basically, this the Jurassic squirrel was not a mammal, uh, but it actually had fur. And it's at 165 million years old. The fossil is actually older than the T-Rex, you know, the guy with the big teeth and the bad attitude. But they found this out in a as a, a, as a preserved specimen out in... Oh. I think it was in China. Yeah, it was in China, yeah. It was, it was an extinct lake bed. Yeah, it was an extinct... In, in Mongolia, China, yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah we talked about that at our, our meeting. Uh, and an extinct lake bed in, in, in Mongolia there. Now, that's, what's interesting about this thing is not the fact that it's 165 million years old. It's the fact that it had fur on the outside of its body before other mammals came along. What's really also interesting on this thing here, it's the oldest known specimen of a true mammal uh, is 160 million years old. So it appears to have been a shrew-like animal that lived off of insects, uh, snagged off of uh, ferns that lived in the shores of freshwater lakes and so forth. One of the two fossils that found showed evidence of uh, pre-hairy mammals, the first found in 2004 at the same location. And also one about 164 million years old, believed to have looked something like a beaver. You know, no, I'm not talking about Wally with that, you know, the, the stupid ass face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wally, can we go to the movies? No, uh, not that one. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, this is really neat, but I'm not surprised by this because fur is a pretty useful evolutionary trait. Furry animals can survive in all sorts of climates. And uh, like you said, this specimen is only 5 million years older than the earliest known mammals. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the traits that we use to define classes of animals would certainly start appearing in individual species before branching out to clusters of uh, other species. Right. Like feathers emerged on dinosaurs before we had birds. Right. And they, they think now that the Tyrannosaurus rex... Uh, along with a lot of other uh, species of dinosaurs, may have actually had feathers and mm -hmm. not just leather, scaly skin. You know that, like they would put in the movies. You know, like some said. dinosaurs, not all dinosaurs. No, not all dinosaurs, but some of them do. Yeah, uh, usually yeah. the meeting ones that ran on two feet, the theropods. They had they were they most likely all had feathers. Yes, yes. Connie, your thoughts? This was, I think, an adaptation that would have helped it to um, be able to have nocturnal hunts. It was a smallish mm -hmm. animal. I thought what was funny about the illustration. It looked like the R-O-U-S's from Princess Bride. But, uh, <laughs> rats of unusual what, size? I don't think they exist. Size. Yeah, <laughs> It's a big um, rat. <laughs> but it, they also were concurrent with evidently the uh, feather bearing dinosaurs also the, mm -hmm. uh, at that, that time. They also said that this thing had uh, spines on its back feet like a platypus. Right. So who, who knows? Maybe this is an ancient descender of the platypus. May have been poisonous, yeah. and it also it it walked. They they're speculating it walked like an armadillo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't know. You know how early, how how much longer it was before you know the evolution uh, continued. Right. Yeah. It's so. yeah. It but it's and it had uh, its teeth and jaws were very similar. Found in modern mammals too. So you know right. this thing, it it, it could have just. I like the I like the 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 Jurassic squirrel name myself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to a theater near you, Jurassic Squirrel. Uh, Slightly less intimidating than the T Rex, but still effective. <laughs> Would you rather run from G Rex or Jurassic Squirrel? You know, I don't I, know. You eh. protect your nuts. That would be the tagline. <laughs> hey, protect your nuts. Always a good idea. Never doesn't matter when. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Isn't that illegal? No, it's not. It's illegal. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Tonight's Is That a Law or Not? We're going to be talking about if you're at a traffic stop and, you know, you might get stopped at some point because for whatever reason the cop just thinks you're pretty. Uh, <laughs> you go to hand him your driver's license and you don't roll down your window all the way, you could effectively be fined or taken to jail. Now, in the research I've done on this, and it was took me at least 20 minutes. No, actually. <laughs> <laughs> extensive research. The extensive research we do Speeding here. Speeding on highways, refusing to roll down windows. Right. I, I had flipping to, off officers. <laughs> I had to do all that before the show. Come on now. I had to I had to go out and tell them, you know, and try it out. Uh, actually, no. Uh, <laughs> and you need to find someone else to be your one phone call. Right. I can't take that call anymore. That's dedication, Packer. <laughs> here, I got the ticket right here. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is with this, a lot of sites I've uh, that I went through, there is apparently there is no law that says you have to roll down your window. However, uh, one of the uh, sites that says to know your rights when you're dealing with police officers, they strongly suggest that you do roll down your window for the simple fact is that you have to be able to not only make contact with the police, but if you don't, then they get more suspicious and they get very nervous. The last thing you want, has, especially nowadays, is a nervous cop sitting at your window. There, I have read many stories where people roll down their window about halfway and then they get arrested because they're saying they're being interfering with a police officer or in police investigation so based on what i'm seeing if you're gonna deal with the cops i mean unless you're in a uh, it's like raining or of course that's the best time to go speeding is when it's raining you know they have to make them stand on the rain uh <laughs> <laughs> that's what i would do is if i was rich i'd you know just go speeding by and, and then i make sure i find a cop and go speed right by him in, the, in a nice heavy downpour and you know, make them stand out there. You know why you're why were you speeding? Why are you standing out there? That's why. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> now you know why. Um, 
<laughs> and you can't pull over right away. You got to make them respect you. That's right. It just goes a little bit. Eh, no, respect um, my authority. Respect my authority. But in all fairness, in all reality, you probably should. Uh, just so you know, to keep the cop at ease, should roll down your window. Otherwise, you can make a, a bad situation even worse. Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, I looked at the forums over on officer.com, and this question was asked. Most of the respondents that are supposedly police officers said that it isn't illegal for someone to roll down the window, but uh, it would raise suspicion because that's typically what someone who is trying to hide drug or alcohol odors would do. So, um, That's a lot of what I saw, too, also. Yeah. And, and the general consensus was, like, it wasn't so much that it was illegal for you not to roll down your window or, or whether they could order you to roll down the window or not. It is legal for them to order you out of your car. Yes. And so if you if they order you out of the car and you refuse to do that, then they can arrest you for refusal to obey a lawful police order. Yes. That's so, exactly right. Now, yeah. the, now the, oh, there is a situation where you, you can refuse to roll down your window. If the cop shows up and he's in an unmarked car, now, if he... If if you get a police officer that's following you and you, he, the car is unmarked, uh, you can you know drive calmly. Don't speed, but drive calmly to a, a nearby police station, gro- grocery store, gas station, something like that, and then you, you can roll it down halfway and say, hey, "Listen, you're in an unmarked car. I don't know if you're a real officer. Can you call a uh, a marked squad over?" In those instances, I think they would be a little bit more understanding. Right. Uh, Connie, your thoughts? This question actually had me just totally confused because I haven't been pulled over that many times in my entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. And when I do, I just automatically comply. I don't know why I would not want to open my window all the way. As a matter of fact, I thought the only reason maybe an officer might not want you to roll your window all the way down might be if you had a weapon or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, because that is... I mean, that is the reason that cops are so nervous about pulling. It's one of the most dangerous things they do besides domestic is to pull somebody over because you don't know what's going to happen. So I suppose that I don't think that way. I don't, when I drink, I I bring alcohol home. I never drive. I don't do drugs and I'm not trying to, you know, hammer anybody else who does, but I don't do those things. No, neither do I. I mean... So, yeah, it's like, why wouldn't I be transparent to the officer? Yeah. We, yeah. Were, we were talking about this in the meeting, and Dave said, oh, I just rolled down my window just to crack, just enough to handle my, my uh, driver's <laughs> license. And he's like... <laughs> I don't know. You probably, you know, in all fairness, like I said, it's not illegal, but it does raise a lot of red flags. Right. And Dave is hiding something. And Dave might be hiding something. He's hiding. <laughs> might be. He might be hiding. <laughs> you know, and there's uh, this old joke. This, this. Uh, jo- if you get, uh, if you get a pulled over by a cop, now, if you just when he pops up the window, just sit there. Don't, don't do anything. Just look there. Look forward. And don't hands on the and steering stand, wheel. hands on the steering wheel for mm-hmm. like five minutes. Don't don't even over how it says something. Don't don't say anything for like five minutes. And then look, turn on to look look and say, "There's nothing in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> no guns, no drugs, <laughs> no dead bodies. Yeah, you want to look? I'll go with you. Yeah, that, so and of course, he will shoot an- you about four or five times. Uh, <laughs> going to say so if we get an anxious twitter from you about you, you'll know what happened is yes what you're saying? <laughs> they don't like it if you crawl in the back seat and go under a blanket either they, they really they kind of frown on that what that's are you doing uh, i'm getting i'm kind of i'm kind of tired right now i'm just gonna climb in the back seat I, i'm too drunk to be in the front seat officer <laughs> curl up my soft door and cry for days <laughs> But in, but in all in all reality here, all kidding aside, if you get pulled over by an officer, your best option is to cooperate. I mean, you're gonna look a lot better, and if chances are that you you may even get your ticket dismissed if you know unless he unless the officers are a real asshole or looking to fill his pocket the the the, the coffers of the county or state or whatever, because they do have quotas and everything. So if you do get pulled over. Do your best. Just just cooperate. Just roll down your window and save yourself a whole lot of hassle. Okay, let's get on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? Do you walk out in the middle of traffic without looking? Well, I bet you you don't, and I bet you you don't, because 
I bet you you don't really, really, truly believe in God. And here's why. Because you don't walk out in the middle of traffic without looking both ways. Do you, if you don't take a blindfold, walk out in the middle of traffic right now, you don't believe in God. If you don't take and go and buy insurance for your house, your car, your you know life insurance policies, you put your safety belt on, take care of yourself, brush your teeth, and uh, you know clean them and everything. There's, of course, there's a lot of people out there who don't take care of their teeth anyway, but that's beside the point. But if you generally take, do things to take care of yourself or take care of your possessions, then you don't believe in God. And that's our question for tonight. Do Christians really, really, truly believe in God? Because there is a passage uh, in the Bible that says God will know what happens to, I don't know the exact quote off the top of my head, if a, a bird falls, then it would know that that bird has fallen and it would catch it or something like that. Uh, I was going to look up the quote and I completely forgot to, but it, it, the guy, and God's supposed to know every hair on your head and he knows how how you're doing and everything and he's going to protect you and shit. But the thing is, do you really believe in God that much? Do you really? Do you think God would stop traffic just for you? I don't think so because I don't think you truly, truly believe. All right, we're going to start the timer. And we're going to start with Connie. Yeah, and, time. and all right, oh. there we go. And the, Hold down the stoop, Connie. There you go. Okay, and, okay. <laughs> and our time <laughs> starts now. Well, I find that uh, God's God's attitude about in the Bible about um, caring for your body or about laying aside savings or inheritance or money seems so so different between the Old and the New Testament. Even when you look at the Old Testament, you have you know going in and pillaging entire uh, cities and and bringing back all of the wealth and mm -hmm. passing on inheritance down to children. Um, but when you look at Jesus' example, you know, for example, he, he himself, according to the stories, didn't really have anything. He also, um, upbraided people for having, having money. You couldn't, you know, um, and in the New Testament too, about the body, about taking care of your body, there's, uh, you, uh, have, uh, the, um, sorry, you have the uh, example of, uh, well, it says, you know, you should take care of your body, but then it says, well, you know, exercise does a little bit of good, but it's really not that important. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of apologetic gymnastics that oh, I yeah. see. It depends on which way you want to go. The, I personally, I, there are some sites out there that I found with believers who actually advocated, said, you know, we really don't need to lay up in big insurance policies. We don't need to worry about these things on earth because we have a heavenly reward. But those are few and far between. There aren't that many that really put the pedal to the metal with what they, I would, I would say that they should be believing about God being their provision and their care. I mean, not to be foolish or stupid about things, but still, there's just mm -hmm. not that many. They... They still think that you should, you know, take you know take your vitamins and 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 put it put money in savings and everything. And I don't know. I don't see the difference. I don't see the so. I don't see the difference yeah. myself mm -hmm. either. No. Uh, Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, I've looked around at what a lot of believers say about their religion on Twitter, and they often say things like "God provides for everything," and and Jesus is with me, and God is with me, and and uh, I don't have to worry about anything because because of this and that and the other, and and. Uh, I went to uh, an atheist rally many years ago, and there was a guy there who was wearing an American atheist jacket, and he was holding up some sign. I don't remember what it said, but he was saying, uh, does your church have fire insurance? And I thought, <laughs> wow, that's brilliant. What a brilliant thing to ask. And I've asked that question of believers over the years. I'm like, well, you know, does your church have fire insurance? And I'm like, well, of course it does. What if it burns down? And it's like, uh -huh. well, why would it burn down? You know? <laughs> right. Or, or lightning rods. They put lightning rods. It's like, if you really believe in God. Take that lightning rod and take it down. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's a clear demonstration of the failure of faith. And right, exactly. Uh, Atheism yeah. TV. Hello, Atheism, Atheism TV, our, 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 our uh, sister channel, as it were, uh, we're who, which we're being featured on right now. Uh, What's up, sister from another mister? <laughs> they also, he says, uh, uh, they also say, I'll pray for you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's a, that, that takes us back to a whole other t uh, show title. Uh, but, yeah. The whole fact is, I don't think that they'd really do because the fact is, you know, they're, there's to try to tell them they they have to take care of themselves. I actually I actually looked it up. It says there, it's in Matthew ten twenty nine. It says there are new two there are no two sparrows sold for a penny yet 
not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. I, I think that's the passage I'm looking for, actually. Uh, well, there's also in Matthew six twenty five through uh, something else, 34, talking about the lilies of the field. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't sow, they don't spin, and yet they have clothing. And the birds, you know, they have everything they can eat. All right. Uh, there's the parable of the rich fool in Luke 12, which, you know, he's late, he built these barns and he set everything aside and he says, don't you understand, you know, you're, you're a fool because you're, you know, you're going to die today. Right. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of uh, parables that Jesus told, he basically talking about the foolishness of, you know, you don't, you don't really have to worry about this stuff. Yeah, and, but, uh, and a lot of it was uh, when Jesus was supposedly around, he also mm-hmm. would, he would preach saying, hey, Sell your worldly goods because it's, you're going to go to heaven by the time I get when I come back. Of course, he never did, you know. Uh, but and we've been waiting two thousand years, and you know what? I think he's a little bit late, don't you? <laughs> um, fashionably late. He's fashionably late. Jesus will return in my lifetime, said one billion dead Christians. Yep, that's about exactly <laughs> it, too. And and I've heard it so many times. He's yeah. coming back in my lifetime. He's coming back in our lifetime. And that guy p- pops off. Well, guess what? He wasn't in your lifetime because I'm still here and you're gone. So, hey. Everything yeah. is a sign of the end times. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that well, McDonald's that... drive through was prophesized. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah th- the thing is, you know, honestly, I, I don't really don't think Christians actually truly, truly believe it. Because if they did, they would just run a kilter. Every which well, way. Isn't, isn't the problem, though, that the Bible does contradict itself so much? When I was a Christian, oh, yeah. I didn't see it. But I see it now. I see how it just talks up both of it, ends of its you-know-what. And Yeah. Uh, yeah you, it what would that depend- be, Connie? It all depends on how you interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be, Connie? <laughs> oh, well, you know, there's the polite term. There's the pie hole and then there's the pie the hole. Shoot. Both ends of the mouth? Shoot. Both ends? <laughs> How am I doing, Crystal? <laughs> I, you like my Southern? <laughs> oh, why, why do we do that, too? Why do I don't poor, know. Poor, poor people in the South and, the, you know, like we, we go there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. The South is no, full of I, a lot of great just, new atheists. It's confusing. It's, it's, <laughs> it is a very confusing, con- yes. Mm-hmm. The, whole, the, the whole thing about it is it just... Yeah. I, it, I saw a great meme touching on what Connie was just saying about mm-hmm. uh, contradictions in the Bible. It was a picture of Jesus, and it said, there are no contradictions in the Bible, and here's 100 complimentary books explaining why. <laughs> <laughs> but our topic is not contradictions, although, you know, I, I think, but I think on a personal level, people contradict themselves. They say they believe in the God, and then, you know, and God should be protecting of them, you know, Uh so uh, if he does, then why bother with all that stuff? Yeah. Well, I think that the horrible things that happen to all of us in life happen to all of us, regardless of your belief or your faith or, or how much you think some God is going to protect you from it. It happens anyway, which is why people go out and buy insurance and, and take care of their health so they don't get sick and things like that. Mm-hmm. Actually, I just happened to look this up. Uh, there's tw- apparently 22 Bible verses about God's protection. So if he's going to protect them, he's doing a piss poor job apparently because athe- atheists or non-believers and believers of all faiths have the same about same amount of rates of bad shit happening to them all the time. Oh, and we are out of time. Speaking of time, we are out of time. So yeah, <laughs> always for you, Packard. Always I, for you. I didn't notice that she's my my daughter over here is like we're out of time. Like oh, oh but shit. You're, you're watching every second if we're making a great point. <laughs> Well, yeah, I have nothing else to do. I have nothing. I, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. Okay, oh, I can watch the clock now. Oh, but. you have nothing else. Oh, my goodness. Nothing to do but listen, you know. I should be in charge of the – I should have proxy buzzer when you're speaking. Okay, fine. We'll work that out. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just make the noise buzzer, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like five minutes in and like – and Packard will start to speak. I'm like, bah! Okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, but uh, yeah, is there a God that's protecting you? Most likely not. So, hey, you're gone this far. Just go the rest of the way. Just give up your fantasy and join the rest of the human race because bad shit's going to happen to you because there's no God's going to protect you. All right, let's move on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see 
what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. And tonight, did you know they were an atheist? Is Paul Bettany? Or Bettany? Bettany. It's <laughs> I got it the second time. Uh, he was born May twenty seventh, nineteen seventy one. He's you're younger than I am. He's more famous too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> he's an English actor. He came to the attention of the mainstream audiences uh, when he appeared in the British films Gangster Number no. One in 2000, Hedgelands, uh, A Knight's Tale, and gone on to uh, big movies like Beautiful Mind, Master Commander, The Far Side of the World. Isn't every side of the world the far side, no matter which side you're on? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's a great movie. Uh, the Da Vinci Code, Dogville, and he was uh, also the voice of Jarvis. In Iron Man and Iron Man 2 and the movie The Avengers and Iron Man 3. So if you're watching Iron Man, if you like Iron Man, then you're listening to, when he speaks uh, as the computer, you're listening to an atheist. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, (laughs) It might affect your beliefs. This is really great that we see more people in big areas of, even if sometimes you don't actually see them and you hear them, but you know what? You can't. If you take a picture of a skeleton and of several people, I dare you to try to pick out the atheist from the, the group. So, but that notwithstanding, uh, Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, I love Bentney in Master and Commander uh, when he played a Charles Darwin like naturalist traveling the world collecting animals and stuff. And uh, years later, he actually played Charles Darwin in a movie called Creation, which was also very good. It's the story of how uh, Darwin got about writing the origin of the species, and, and Bentney was great in that. Mm-hmm. Um, he contrasts these scientific roles with uh, somewhat religious or, or religious-themed movies like The Da Vinci Code. And when I was reading up on him, I think he, he maybe is doing this to deal with his young Catholic upbringing. Interesting. Uh, you know, he said that his youth was full of uh, guilt and going to church and all that. But now he's a self-described fanatical atheist. Fanatical atheist. He writes yes. things. I, I don't know any <laughs> fanatical atheists myself. Uh, only you folk and our plan for world domination is proceeding as planned. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I I wish someone would let me in on the plan because apparently I'm losing my copy. I'm not getting my memos again. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're the beautiful distraction. Here. Oh, that's what it is. I am the distraction. <laughs> that's my role. Damn. I wish, see. I hey, that's why. See? I, see, this is why I need my notes and my memos. <laughs> the, the last memo I saw, Packard, you were put in charge of the flower committee. Were you aware of that? <laughs> <laughs> Again, not getting my memos. <laughs> I, well, I, I remember hearing something about flour, but I brought a bag home. They said, looked at me like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, you said you wanted flour. <laughs> but I <laughs> they thought they wanted you to make bread. Huh? Oh, I thought that's what I thought they wanted. Maybe some muffins. Uh, Connie, your thoughts? <laughs> First time I ever saw Paul Bettany was in the movie A Knight's Tale, which I've only watched once. It was that MTV thing where they had uh, rock music in it. And I loved him. He's chocolate. Or he's getting up there and he's announcing the fights, although I wouldn't want to be in spitting distance of him when <laughs> the way he was <laughs> enunciating everything. But uh, yeah, I and I loved him. I loved him in Master Commander. Um, mm-hmm. His character was called Dr. Stephen or Stephen Maturian, and he was a surgeon. Uh, I loved the scenes of him and uh, Russell Crowe's character, the captain, you know, under under deck playing the cello and the violin, I guess it was, and doing, you know, while the while the ship is sailing along. It was a really great, and I wish I, I, I need to see uh, the movie Creation. Uh, his wife, Jennifer, Con- is Jennifer Connelly, which I didn't know until we, I was looking this up, and she stars as uh, Darwin's wife. Yeah, I love oh. Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, me um, too. I've seen Legion and Priest, and... I heard, a, actually, I heard a, a, I heard a review on Creation. I heard it wasn't all that good but no it's not the no. greatest movie but you know i enjoyed it oh okay well yeah if you're if you're in it i the way i understand it if i remember correctly the way i heard it is more focused on some other aspects of his life not so much the, his discoveries or anything like that so yeah well it's it's more towards the end of his life after he's done most of his scientific work now he's working on writing the book itself and he's going through health issues and emotional issues because yeah. his his daughter passed away and yeah. his wife is kind of a foil to him she she really doesn't want him writing this stuff because she's yeah. very religious still 
Uh-huh. But, you know, it, it touches on all that stuff. It, it is a good movie. You know, it's not the greatest movie ever made, but I, I liked it. Okay. Well, you, it, if that's your thing, give it a shot. You know, you never know. It might be, it might be something worth watching. All right. I think that's it for us. Uh, so we're going to get out of here. But before we do, we're going to tell you how to uh, contact us. And if I know you want to contact us. We're available on email and Facebook and all those nice places. And if you feel so inclined, uh, go over to patreon.com slash Packard Poke That. And please uh, donate a dollar if you can or two dollars or more. And if you donate uh, fifty dollars, you get a free hat. And if you donate a hundred dollars, you get a free shirt. And if you donate two hundred dollars, you get a free sweat uh, hoodie sweatshirt type thing. But in the meantime, and if you're not over at Patreon, go over to our thecafepress dot com and slash packer pokes at and and uh, buy a nice little uh, mug like this. These are these are really nice. They're the the stuff does not wash off. Uh, it's not like it's just painted on or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna give you all our contact information uh, right now. Would you like to contact us? Your host, Packard Sonic, and his very honored and crazy co-hosts with occasional guest hosts enjoy your comments or suggestions. You can reach us 28 hours a day, 8 days a week on A Can on a String, Smoke Signals, Star Trek Communicator. Those may not work, but you can contact us on Twitter as Packard Pokes at and by email at Packard Pokes at at gmail.com. You can also listen and join in the conversation live Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes app. You can find past shows on iTunes, YouTube, Mixler Radio, and Stitcher Radio. Help us out by rating, commenting, subscribing, retweeting, and reposting the show wherever you can. Click the like button on Facebook slash Packard Pokes at to join in the conversation. Would you like to help keep the show running and pick up some awesome Packard Pokes at merchandise? Visit cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at today and buy hats, shirts, or one of over 300 other items that are also available. Visit packardpokesat.wordpress.com for links to the news articles covered tonight and more information on this or other episodes. We hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for listening and your support. All right. Well, Joe, you did a great job on that again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Crystal in the chat room says that you got her a, a Packard Pokes at Thong, and she wants to know why I didn't get one, and I, I want to know the answer to that, too. I mean, She's that's, kidding. That's bullshit. She's kidding. Besides, I, she, I, you she doesn't care about underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you got to send me your size, Joe, so I can send you the right size. Uh. <laughs> Packard, you know my size. <laughs> you guys need a room? <laughs> Oh, that's just nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you can buy thongs there too. Uh, uh, seriously, you can you can buy a thong with Packard Pokes that logo on it if you're really so inclined. You really can. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get one and wear it as an eye patch to Skepticon. <laughs> Joe, do that. I gotta I'll put you on the I gotta put a picture on the on the on the Facebook page of that. <laughs> what do you think I won't do it? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming to our short show tonight. Uh, this has been Packard Pokes. We just poked at your news. And that's a wrap. <laughs>